G'day viewers, how you doing? It's time to learn how to set up and drive the GP38-2 on Horseshoe Curve. Let's jump in the loco. Okay, the very first thing we want to do before we do anything else, the locos on this route have a little quirk. You must turn on Banking Com before you do anything else. So let's do that now. And you press the DISP button on the radio. Some routes it's PTT, on this one it's DISP. Very important to remember, very important to do it first. All right, let's get moving. Now, these two switches, they surely were already on, or that engine you can hear idling behind me wouldn't be. Just saying. Okay, let's set our headlights on. I've just put them on dim. That just lets other crews know that this train is active. All right, I put our reverser in. Let's continue with the lights, some gauge lights and our step lights. And let's jump up here behind me now. I want to set this to be a controlling unit with the unit coupled at the long hood end. So that just sets the headlights up. Platform lights on, engine room lights. We don't really need them, but let's turn them on anyway. The number lights. And that just helps people know who we are. Cool bananas. All right, next up, we want to set up the brakes. Now, first up for safety, let's apply our independent and make sure that applies. So the red needle here shows the independent brake. And that stops us from rolling away. Next, we want to do is the MU2A valve down here. We want to set that to be lead because that tells it that we are the front locomotive and that we're in charge of the brakes. Now, before I cut the brakes in, I'm going to release from handle off back to the release position. And the reason I do that is it stops the brake system getting confused when I cut it in and say that we're a freight train. So the train brakes are now applying. Sorry, well, they apply to the train, but that means that we'll be starting to release. So we'll leave that happening. Looks like the train brake is pumping up happily. Good. So let's just pop our reverse sort of forward now. And before we do anything else, you notice I haven't turned on the gen field yet. I have done that deliberately because I want to pop down to the back to the first of the trailing locos in the back because I want to make sure that banking comms working. All right, I can see that we have got a reverser in, so that's good. That means it is actually working. Back to the front one. And let's turn on our generator field so we can actually make some amps. Now, before I release the independent brake, a couple of nice big blasts on the horn. Let's go outside and hear it. Nice horn, isn't it? And let's just take one notch because I want to make sure that we make power. There we go. I can see that we're making power over here now. So I will release the independent brake. Now, we're going to need more than one notch to get moving. So I'm just going to take it straight to notch three. Now that's as far as you want to go with a freight train. Even three is really pushing it. But a lot of the time when you're starting out on this route, you're actually on a gradient. To turn off the bell there, it's a bit annoying. It's prototypical to have it running in the yard, but I don't like it. Boring like that. Now, in this cupboard, should you choose to turn on the alerter, you can. Now, at the moment, I would suggest that you don't. But if you do turn it on, make sure you also drive with the HUD, this one, because the alerter will turn up in the bottom right hand corner. Um, the reason I suggest not turning it on right now is that it's a little bit quiet. And I hope that that'll be addressed sometime in the not too distant future. So let's get this thing up to about 10 mile an hour. I'm going to take another notch now. That's much sooner than I normally would. I would normally say just let things settle down for a while. And then I want to show you how to apply a normal brake. And then we'll do an emergency brake. Alright then, so I'm going to drop this back to idle because the first in the braking systems that I'm going to show you is the dynamic brake. So we bring this to setup and we'll just let it sit for a while because, you know, you're supposed to wait until it's been idle for 10 seconds. I maybe did five. Naughty. You can hear it's gone into setup now. So we can start 
increasing this. Now it's a bit analog, it's not really notchy, and that's the way it should be. So don't expect it notchy. You can see that we're now traction motors are generating power and it's getting burnt off by the resistor grid and we are indeed slowing down. So let's just take that off again. Just let the train settle down a little bit. And then let's accelerate back up to 10 mile an hour. These quick changes are probably the worst thing you could ever do to a freight train, but hey, the game's forgiving, so I can do this in a quick tutorial for you. Because no one likes long tutorials that go on forever, do they? I know I don't. Alright, let's grab another one now. Get a bit more speed going. Rightio, we are back up to 10 miles an hour, so I'll go back to idle. And now I want to do a minimum or an initial reduction on this one. So you can see that's doing a light application of the brakes, and we are indeed slowing down. So you can just let that come to a stop. That'll work fine. If you need to brake harder because you're on a steep hill or whatever, then you can use a lot more. You can take it all the way up to full service and you'll see your brake applications happening here so the red gauge is showing it and the white one is showing the pipe so the pipe's dropped a bit there and they have now equalized all right so let's release that again a couple more big honks brake pressure's come up far enough on the back that we'll be able to move because now i want to show you an emergency brake so let's just go straight to notch four for the sake of this exercise don't drive that way, not really. We don't have to get up much speed because then I want to show you how to reset from the emergency. All right, this will do. Let's go into emergency now. Now this works the same way from here as if you come over here and yank this valve as well. So the same thing. So let's go straight to emergency, blam. You can see straight away Drops the brake pipe to zero. Brakes go on hard and the train will stop. So let's take our throttle back to idle. Take our reverser to the neutral position. Fully apply the independent brake. Release the train brake. And you can see that's starting to recover now. So once we've pumped up the train again, then we can uh, release our independent brake and take control again. It's quite okay to go back into forward now. It'll take a little while to pump the train up. Not particularly long. Normally, if you, you can hear the brakes are releasing now because the pressure's coming up. Um, normally, if you did an emergency brake, you'd be going out there to have a look at your consist to make sure everything was okay before you took off again. All right. Once the rear brakes get up to near enough to 70, we'll be able to get moving. So I will give it a couple of notches and see that we're powering, we are, and take off the independent brake and away we go. Now it'll be a little bit sluggish at the moment. We'll use a bit more power because we're still releasing down the back there. We haven't got up to the 80 PSI yet, but we will. Sooner or later we'll be able to move. Since we're fighting the brakes, let's just take another notch. It's a bit rude. You really wouldn't do it this way. Because what you're going to do is brake couplers. But you get the idea. Still waiting for the brakes to come off. Let's be even ruder and grab another one. There we go. That's getting things moving. In, if this was a real situation, you would have just broken at least one coupler in your train doing that. But that's life. All right, that concludes our tutorial 
on the GP38-2 on Horseshoe Curve. If you've got any questions, chuck them below in the chat and I will do my best to answer them. I really like the locomotive, sounds good, drives quite nicely and it's got an awesome horn. Don't you reckon? I reckon. Anyway, thanks a lot. See you later. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I always like to get your feedback in the form of likes and comments because they help me understand what you want. Give the channel a subscribe and click on the tinkly things so you don't miss out on any new stuff. And thanks for your ongoing support. And please, be safe out there.